Hello. So today I thought I'd show you how I created one of my um, backgrounds for my journal page. Somebody asked how I, I created it. No, we'll find it eventually. This one. Uh, it's got nice rust colours, but it's also got a lovely green colour. There is another one here, similar type of thing, but that's got red in the background. And then this has got a rusty feel to it, bit of turquoise, and then a napkin decoupaged on. But anyway, we'll do the rust and green one. So I've got my journal. This is just a cheap one from Aldi. I think they came in a pack of three. Um, it's quite nice paper, but it, it does warp a little bit, but I'm not really that bothered. I've got my scrap paper just for uh, stopping it from <coughs> excuse me, going anywhere it shouldn't. Uh, I'm going to dig out my little brayer and a paintbrush, quite a big paintbrush. And then the first thing I use is this. And it is the liquid that is left when I've been rust dyeing. Um, it, it'll be a combination of vinegar, water, rust powder, and it's a nice, lovely, rusty colour. If I've been rust dyeing pages, sheets of paper, anything, or fabrics, I don't throw away any liquid that's left in the container. Uh, I just pop it into here. So it's quite a few projects worth of rusty water. Um, I've also got some that's a lot weaker in these bottles here. But we'll use the strong one. So I'm just going to start and I'm just going to blather it all over. It's quite absorbent is this paper. I'm going to make sure we've got everywhere covered. A bit more on the top. Now I'll just put my brushes straight into water straight after I've used them because obviously the rusty water will corrode the brush the metal bits on the brush right, so there we are now I've got a scrap piece of paper here it was just one of my um, it's got text on the back and I'm just going to pop it on and press and press again and I turn it round and just press sort of here and there and it gets this nice textured look to it. If you don't like the tech, and you get this as a bonus, if you don't like the textured look, let's see if I can find one of my little bits of, here we are, oh, this is a, a just a random bit of sponge, you can you want it a bit smoother and you don't like the coralling you can just dab a sponge on and get rid of the coralling. It's, it's a bit like a dendritic effect. If you wanted more you could add more. I'm just going to give that a quick blast to dry it a little bit. Right, you can see what I mean by the, the way that it warps because it's got the wet medium on it. Right, now I've got a, an eye zinc dye spray, it's by Aladdin, uh, designed, the colour was designed by Seth Apter. So give it a good shake up. Let's get my page onto my, I've got a glass mat on top of my uh, 
desk as well. So I don't want to cover it everywhere so I'm just going to give it a blast there, there, up there and there. I'm just going to also give it a few splatters just because I want some really dark areas. It's a, get it all over my fingers. Oh, I should have told you what colour it was because when it's onto white you can see probably at the sides here that it's actually a turquoise colour. It's called Blue Ocean Turquoise. Um, lovely turquoise colour on white. Once it gets onto the rust it obviously changes colour uh, because it mixes with the orangey rusty colour and makes a green but that's what I really like. So we'll give it a bit of a blast to dry that off as well. My splatters won't dry as quickly as the others. But I can leave those for a little while to dry. There. I'm going to get another brush. I think I need a bit more. Get my rusty water again. My jar. This is no pastry brush, is this? Some rusty splatters. Put that in water and then I'll dry this and we'll add some stamping and a focal point but I'll just leave it as it is uh, just to dry and then we'll come back later. All right so we're back and it's all nice and dry. I'm just gonna dig out some f to stamps, my favourite ones. I like that one. I like that one. I like this one from ESA 27. It's one of my favourite ones. And I like this one, upside down, this one from ESA 28. Seth has got some new stamps out which are launching I think next Tuesday. Can't wait to see those. They look as if they're going to be great. He's, they've done a little bit of a a banner in the paper artsy group with some of them on and they look great. So I've got these two stamps to start with. I'm going to dig out my sepia um, archival ink ranger because it, it sort of tones with the the rust and the rusty background. I think I'll also dig out my black, my jet black which is my favourite. We'll start with the rusty one and I think we'll have some marks using this one. So I tend to work in from the corners so we'll start up there and you'll see I don't use all the stamp and I just go randomly tend to work from corners inwards but it's just giving some texture to the page I like to go over some of the areas so that you get some depth yep that's good so far I'll put our sepia away and we'll get our black out, which you can tell is very well used. I don't buy new ink pads, I just re-ink them. And I've had this one for donkey's years and I just keep re-inking re it. I like this because this is lines and I really like lines. Quite linear person. I'll come in from the side.
again. It's sort of almost adding a frame to it, but it isn't. Just adding more interest. Uh, we'll have a little bit up here. A little bit down there. Let's get some of the ink off. And we'll go up there and there. Those don't particularly show up. I'm not bothered about that. It just adds a bit of something. So we've got a good start to our background. We've got some marks showing. Um, we've got some splashes. We've got the variations in colour. And need something else, I think. Hmm... What else shall we have? We definitely need some words and we need a bit of a focal point. Um, I'm trying to think of something that I haven't done before that we can use. We have to be careful because the eyes ink sprays are water soluble. So whatever we do on top of here it will move because it, it isn't uh, permanent. Now I've got this mixed media art stamp by Seth, which I think might. If I stamp it onto something and put it there, that would be quite nice. So we'll move our page out of the way for the moment and we'll get. This is dry just about. Maybe that would. Yeah, that would blend too much. I think the paler one would be quite nice. So, and this is just scrap paper that I've blotted off some of the rusty water. Now, what's the betting this won't fit on my acrylic block that I've got out? Let me just find a bigger one. I should have been prepared, I know. Let's see if this one's big enough. No, that's not big enough either. You can almost guarantee I go through about 25 but I find, before I find the one I want. Right, this, this one will go across corners, it'll be fine. If it won't fit one way, go across corners. So I think we'll go with... I haven't got a dark green. Sure. Look at our distress inks. I might go with peeled paint. Distress ink. This is peeled paint. It's a nice green colour. As long as my ink pad isn't too dry, we should be alright. Truly. Alright, which area do we fancy? I fancy a bit of white in the background. I think quite a few of my ink pads re need re-inking. We'll see how we do with this. Oh yeah, quite like that. It's quite pale, but I do like it. I was wondering if I've got a darker green that I could go with. Look. No. I am normally more prepared than this. Um, yeah. We'll try forest moss. Oh, pine needle. We'll try pine needle. I think that should be good. Put that away. We can give it a go.
quite often, if I'm doing things like this, I will stamp two or three times, um, then decide which one I'll use. But then I have a little box with all ephemera and stamped bits and pieces in it. So I can use them at a later date. I've got a ready-made stash of bits and pieces. Yeah, I think maybe like that a little bit better. So I'll quickly cut them out. And remember your distress ink is also water reactive, it's not permanent, so hopefully might fast forward this so you don't need to watch me cutting out. quite nice but it doesn't show up enough that I think is the one we'll have that one I think we'll probably have it about there I'm almost wondering whether we should have this in as well no I don't think mm, you don't know No, we'll just stick with that one. You can see it ties in with the rust, but we've got a little bit of white, which is nice because it just lightens the whole thing a little. So whatever we put on here, it'll the um, spray inks will wick up into the, the white. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's acrylic paint or pens, whatever, it, it will wick up. And I, I like this here because we've got this nice big splotch of rusty water there. That's really nice. I'll have a dig in my scrap box and see what else we've got of other scraps that I can build around there. So, right, so we're back. I've dug out a few scraps um, to use. These little bits here were off the piece of paper that I had underneath that were protecting everything from the spray inks and everything. So they've got rust and they've got spray inks on. And I've just torn them with the ruler and I quite like the linear effect coming in at the sides. But it's got a little bit of white with the torn edges which picks up the white in there. Because I think overall it needs to be lightened. Uh, so we'll take that off. We've got a little bit of the Paper Artsy crunchy waxed craft paper uh, which I've embossed it was a scrap I was trying to see what an embossing folder would look like with it so there's that there's our other wording and then this is some rusty kitchen roll tissue uh, where I've been rusting some paper clips you can see the the marks where the paper clips have been and I've just torn that I don't know whether I need it a little bit more I don't know Let's see, yeah, a little bit more uneven maybe coming in there. I want to keep my big splatter, I like the big splatter. So yeah, I, I think we're getting there. I've also got some painty, inky, dried um, wet wipes that I keep. I keep them once that I've um, used them because they're lovely torn up. You can just, once they're dry, you can just tear them and then you can stretch them and pull them and get nice 
random and quite ethereal bits of material which are quite nice to use and I think that will just lighten it up a little bit <coughs> excuse me so I've got my PVA glue I'm just going to now I have to be very careful because if I get the glue onto the page the spray ink will move just typical my glue won't work just having one of those days today right that's it I'll just spread it about with my fingers a bit so we'll come in here Yeah, I like the linear look of that one. It's got quite a lot of glue on it, I don't want so much. I've gone quite low with that one, I think, so that we can still see our rusty. splashes here. Now this one I'm just going to go like that. So I quite like the edges to be not completely flat so it gives a bit of dimension and we'll go with this. This is extra strong PVA and the um, crunchy wax craft paper does stick fine with it. Now I think I now want a little bit of lightness so we'll maybe go with a bit of that. Maybe a small a bit. I've got quite a few bits sort of torn and teased out a little bit. Yes, maybe. Hmm. I think if this is still wet, yeah, I'll do. Get my Fabri Tac glue because that's great for fabric. The PVA would stick the fabric, but this is this is better. And you don't need a lot, and it soon dries. It dries very quickly. So I'm going to have that on there. Make sure it makes contact with the fabric tack. There we are. And then we'll go back to our could use fabric tack on this as well. It would work, but we'll go back to our PVA. Yeah, that just breaks it up a little bit. things that are not straight. That's about right. Right, I think I think we're getting there. Sorry putting my arm in the way. I do think I need a little bit more of this fabric tack on my fingers and everything's sticking to me. So 
We might just have a little bit coming in here. Yeah, I think we'll have that. I shall cut that bit off. And just so it's a bit more cohesive, we'll have a little bit coming in here as well. Maybe at the top, I think. Yeah. So we'll cut those two bits off and then Now I'm wondering whether... No, we'll go with fabric tack, it'll be better. It will definitely stick it. That's that bit up there. I'll just spin it round, it'll be easier. And then we'll have a bit up here. Got to remember to put your stopper on your fabric tack fairly soon. I actually like it going across there. And we'll have a little bit just up here. Hopefully this is in shot. There we are. Put that away where it lives. And I think we are about there. Yes, I do. I like that. I has one more thing that I did think I might do. You know, so when everything's dry, I need to just eat and eat the edges up a little bit. I could leave them overlapping, but when I'm working, I'll end up possibly um, getting other colours on them. So I think I need a little bit of something else. And I've got this, it's, I think it was a trellis for a plant. And I think you get it by the meter at the garden centre. But anything, you could use a stencil or whatever. Um, and I've just got my uniball pen. And I just want to add a bit of interest. So I'm using this like a stencil. And I just want random ones here and there. And I know that it'll change colour when it gets onto the um, the dye spray. But when it's just on the rusty water, it doesn't tend to change as much. So we'll just get variations. A bit there, a little bit there. I need a little bit on here, I think, overlapping here. Just to draw your eye down. Maybe a little bit up here. Yeah, I think I need some here. This, this is on the green, so you'll see this will wick up the, the colour. Yeah, it, it just needed a little bit of white, and I think that that is enough. And a little bit up there just to balance it, and I think we're there. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I'm 
done so neaten the edges up I think the white just lightens it up a little bit uh, and stops it just being too too dark basically um, and we've got a nice bit of texture going on with the rusty tissue and the baby wipe they are, they are lovely when they're torn, they're quite ethereal and if it was too much or not the right shape you can just pull it about but that I think is done